Hey everybody, ChargePoint just reported their second quarter earnings results yesterday after the market closed, and today the stock is absolutely crashing. It's down 21%. Um, you can see over the past five days, it was you know hovering around that uh, $7, a bit over, over $7 a share, and now today it's down to about $5.5 per share. So we're going to be going over their earnings results so you can get an idea of what exactly happened with ChargePoint. We're going to be starting off with the slide deck charge point prepared for this earnings report. The first slide has revenue diversity. The first chart here is by type. So this includes revenue or sorry, networked charging systems, which is basically their hardware sales. Those are the blue bars. Then they've got subscriptions, the orange bars, and then other revenue in the gray bars. So for this second quarter this year, they had just about $150 million of total revenue. In terms of revenue growth, ChargePoint's hardware sales grew by about 36% year over year, and their subscriptions revenue grew by about 48% year over year. Looking at geographies, 79% of ChargePoint's quarter two revenue came from North America, and the remaining 21% came from Europe. You'll see that Europe's growth has been pretty good over the past year, and in the second quarter, it was up about 78% year over year. Moving on to non-GAAP gross margins, these were at 3% in the second quarter. They said for GAAP gross margins, they're about 1%. So obviously not good at all. They barely made any money even before getting onto the operating expenses. So um, definitely not a good scenario for ChargePoint. They said the reason for this was a $28 million impairment charge to their inventory. They said they were purchasing a lot of the components for this product during the supply chain crisis when the when the prices for those components were very high. And now apparently they still have some of that inventory on hand and the value of it is a lot lower than it used to be. So they've decided to take an impairment charge on it, which was about $28 million. And that went to their gross margins. And now it's at 3% for the second quarter because this is when the impairment charge was recognized. They said, though, that in the future, um, this gross margin should be, you know, back to kind of these levels that it was at previously. It's not going to stick down. It's not going to stay down there. This is kind of just a one time thing in the second quarter. ChargePoint also announced a reorganization of its operations. Basically, they're laying off about 10 percent of their global workforce. It's expected to lead to approximately eight million dollars of charges consisting primarily of severance benefits and facility related expenses to be incurred primarily during the third quarter this year, but it's expected to result in annual operating expense savings of approximately $30 million. They also gave guidance for the third quarter and a bit for the fourth quarter as well. Um, for the third quarter, they expect revenue between $150 and $165 million. At the midpoint, this represents anticipated increase of 26% year over year. Non-GAAP gross margin to be about 22 to 25%. Non-GAAP operating expenses of 81 to $84 million. You'll notice that's a bit lower than where those operating expenses were um, for the second quarter. Right here, these were at $89 million. So already you can see some of the effects, I guess, of that um, reorganization effort they're putting in. And then for the fourth quarter, um, they're expecting non-GAAP operating expenses of $79 million to $82 million. So again, a little bit lower than where it was or lower than what they're expecting for the third quarter. And then for the full fiscal year ending January 31st, 2024, ChargePoint expects revenue between 605 and $630 million, which at the midpoint would be an anticipated increase of about 32% over the prior year. Moving on to the income statement, we've got those revenues we talked about earlier. Um, again, the hardware sales, these grew by about 36% year over year. But if we look at the cost of revenue for those hardware sales, they grew by about 70%. And I think the reason for that is because they've included that impairment charge of $28 million in this cost of revenues line. Um, if you take away that impairment charge, the growth um, is only about 33% or so. So I think I'm pretty sure the impairment charge has been included right here. Then there's that subscription revenue. Again, it grew by about 48% year over year. The cost of subscription revenue, though, it grew by about 40%. So it looks like the gross margins for subscriptions is continuing to improve. 
Then there's the operating expenses. They've got research and development at just under $60 million, sales and marketing just under $40 million, and general and administrative just over $25 million. So, you know, when you look at these, these are just for this one quarter, just for the second quarter. Um, and these operating expenses were $124 million. And their, their you know, reorganization effort, they're targeting to reduce those by about $30 million per year. So it doesn't seem like that's going to really make too much of a dent in, you know, reducing these operating expenses. They're still going to be very high, I would imagine. Um, but um, yeah, that's that, that's where the operating expenses are at for charge point at the moment. And then lastly, they had interest income of $1.8 million and interest expense of just under $3 million. So their net loss for the second quarter was $125.3 million. Moving on to their balance sheet, they've got cash and cash equivalents of $233.5 million. These have been declining since the end of their previous uh, fiscal year. Restricted cash is at $30.4 million. Nothing has changed there since the end of January. Short-term investments, uh, previously they had over $100 million there, and now those are down to zero. So I, I would assume those have been moved into cash. Um, then accounts receivable are at $202 million. Um, so those have been increasing. Inventories at $143 million. Those are also increasing. Um, and then prepaid expenses and other current assets at $82.6 million. Property and equipment is at $42.7 million. Intangible assets are at $88 million. Operating lease right of use assets at $20.1 million. Goodwill, $216.6 million. And other assets at $8.7 million. So ChargePoint's total assets right now, they're still over a billion dollars, but they are declining a little bit from where they were at the end of January this year. Going down to the liabilities, they've got accounts payable of $99 million, accrued in other current liabilities of $145.7 million, deferred revenue, $95.8 million, and uh, deferred revenue non-current, $124 million, debt non-current, $295.5 million, operating lease liabilities, $19.5 million, deferred tax liabilities, $11.9 .7, million, and other, no, other long-term liabilities, $1.6 million. So their total liabilities were at $793.2 million. So still, ChargePoint has a positive book value, but it is, I believe it is declining. Their total assets have declined while their total liabilities have increased. Finally, moving on to the cash flow statement, there's that net loss of just under $205 million. They've got a lot of stock-based compensation, $59 million. There's that inventory repairment, $28 million. Um, then we've got changes in operating lease liabilities, you know, all these things. Accounts receivable, $40.5 million. Inventory is almost $100 million. Um, accounts payable, 30, almost $34 million there. So overall, their net cash used in operating activities was $190.6 million. Um, cash flows from investing activities, purchases of property and equipment, they spent a bit there. Maturities of investments, $105 million. Again, we saw that on the balance sheet, the uh, short-term investments right there. So I guess these have reached maturity and these have now um, gone on to the cash uh, line right there on the balance sheet. And then cash flows from financing activities. Um, you'll see a debt issuance cost related to the revolving credit facility. In the second quarter, they entered into a $150 million revolving credit line. And it looks like these are just costs associated with entering into that uh, $2.3 million or so. Um, proceeds from the issuance of common stock under employee equity plans, um, $6.2 million. Proceeds from issuance of common stock with the at the market offering, $55 million. Change in driver funds for the amounts due to customers, $8.8 .8 million. And settlement of contingent earnout liability, $3.5 million. So net cash provided by financing activities was $64 million overall. So I want to know what you guys think. Do you think it's justified that ChargePoint stock has crashed today, or do you think this is over-exaggerated? Obviously, there was some not-so-good things that happened in this quarterly report. Um, there was the inventory impairment charge of $28 million that brought their gross margins down to almost zero. And then there's their organizational restructuring 
They're aiming to lower their operating expenses by about $30 million annually, but they're already spending so much on their operating expenses as it is, so it doesn't seem like that $30 million per year is going to make too much of a dent on, the, on lowering those operating expenses. Another thing I forgot to mention from the earnings call is that they said the demand for their chargers wasn't where it should have been given the usage levels at their existing chargers. So it sounds like this is kind of due to the overall economy being very poor right now. And um, oh, as that continues to improve, it sounds like ChargePoint is expecting um, a lot of those customers to be purchasing more ChargePoint products since the utilization rates for the existing chargers is very high right now. So it sounds like ChargePoint is expecting the demand for their products to turn around with the economy as a whole. Overall, I think the main concerns investors have right now is how much additional funding ChargePoint is going to need in order to reach profitability. ChargePoint has said that they believe the cash they have right now can last them until they're a bit positive at the end of calendar year 2024. Pretty much the main reason ChargePoint isn't profitable right now is that their operating expenses are still far exceeding their gross profits. So it's just going to be a matter of time until they manage to get those gross profits above the level of their operating expenses and then they can get their business um, up to operating profitability. Let me know what your thoughts are on ChargePoint's earnings results and where you think ChargePoint is going to be in the future. I've got lots of other videos on EV charging companies so be sure to check those out and I'll see all of you in the next video.